Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unmentioned Force tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be going over sound cues, which is directional audio or location based audio, however you want to word it, but it is going to be sound cues. So now I've used these quite a lot in past videos, but I've never really gone over explaining what it is properly. I have briefly mentioned it, but this video is just going to be dedicated only towards that to help you really understand it. So let me hit play and show what we're going to make today. So you see that if I hit play, you can hear some background music. However, it is just everywhere. So it's a 2D sound. It is just playing in the background. There's no location to it. There's no direction. It's just there. So I'll shut up for a second and let you really hear it. So again, you'll notice it's just there. This is what we call a 2D sound. This is great for buttons for a menu or maybe music in the menu as well. But let's say you just want this background music to not necessarily be music. Maybe it's like the birds chirping in the background or something, which you do want to have direction so it's on a tree. I'm just using music as a general example so it's constantly playing. Now if I were to change this from 2D to 3D, so it's now a sound cue, what we're going to hear is you'll see that I've placed it in the bottom left corner and you can hear it in your left ear now. And if I were to look to the right, I will hear it on my right. I'm not 100% sure how this is going to pick up on YouTube, but YouTube might just automatically put it straight back to 2D. I really hope they don't. However, if they do, you're just gonna have to take my word for it and try it out on Unreal as well. But you'll see that also as I move towards it, the location will change. Now that stopped looping for some reason. So I fixed that, but again, you'll see that you will now hear it over there. So again, I'll be quiet and really listen to this. So again, this is what we're going to be going over today, changing it from just a 2D static sound to actually 3D or location-based and directional. So this is what we're going over today, just going over how to create it, which is quite basic, but I'll just be going over what everything means. Now you can really customize this and change it to be perfect for you. So without further ado, let me tell you this and I'll get on with the video. So the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously import the sound effect which you're going to be using. You've probably already done this, but just in case you haven't, I'm going to import my background music here like so. Now you want to make sure this is a WAV 16 bit. I'm just going to open this up just to change some things in here because this is music and also just for the purpose of the tutorial. So I want to loop it so we're constantly going to be hearing it again for the purpose of this video and I'm also going to lower it down to 0.1 in volume again just so it's not too loud for you and you can still hear me talking over it. So I'm going to save that and again you do not need to do that for the video to work I'm just doing that and I thought I'd show you as well. After that this is the main step for actually creating the audio. What we can do is right click, go to sounds and create a sound cue, or we can just right click on our audio file here and create cue. The benefit of doing it that way is it's going to immediately create it with the sound inside. So if we open it up, it's already going to be in there connected up. But however, if you obviously want to have more than one sound effect in there, you might be better off just creating a sound cue individually and then dragging them in. So if I were to open this up, I can drag them in like that and that's how you get sound effects in there. And again, in different videos, I've gone over playing more than one sound effect in here. So what you can do is, let's say these are two different sounds. We can have a random node, connect them both into there and that goes into the output. And what that's gonna do is then play a random one. Obviously, so this is good for footsteps or gunshots, anything really where you want it to be more dynamic. Or if you wanted to play them both at the same time, not random ones, what you can use is a mixer node. And that is again, going to add both of them so they play at the same time. But that's not really what I'm going over today. I thought I'd just add that in there as well. What I'm also gonna do is add a looping onto here, not an envelope, sorry. We want looping. Now I did do this already in the sound file itself. However, I'm doing it here as well, just in case, because sometimes it doesn't work. So all I've got is my audio, have it looping, go into the output. That is the basic part which I'm gonna be doing today. Now again, I said I'm gonna do directional and location based. So let's get on with that. Under the attenuation distance, we want to make sure we have enable volume attenuation ticked. Then we're going to scroll all the way down until we find attenuation and we're going to tick override attenuation. And this means we can actually change it so it is now location based directional and we can customize this to get it perfect for us. Now we're going to scroll back up to attenuation distance here and we can change the inner radius and the fall off distance like so, as well as obviously the function and shape. We're gonna save this as this is now technically working, which I'm going to show you. So I'm gonna drag it in, just place it in the top right corner here. And again, I'll go over the rest of it in a second, but if we hit play, we'll see that this is now directional. So that's playing in my right ear. Again, I hope this is being picked up on YouTube. 
But what if we want to change this a bit and customize it a bit more? Again, you can obviously change the shape here so it can be a sphere, a capsule, a box, or a cone. I'm just gonna minimize this a bit like so and then change those there. So we'll see, this is what it looks like if I select it. Let me just go out a little bit and also move it into the middle here just to again get a better view. What I'm gonna do is that's a sphere, capsule, is obviously like that, like the player collision capsule, a box, obviously a box, and a cone, obviously a cone. I'm gonna keep it as a sphere, nice and basic. I'm also just gonna increase this size a little bit just so we can get a bit more of a good view like that. Let's say I also want to change the size of it. So I'm just gonna move this down a bit so it's close to the floor. And you'll see we have one circle here and an outer circle. So we've got inner and outer circle. The inner circle is obviously this inner radius here, which at the moment is 400. We can increase and decrease that and you'll see the circle is getting bigger and smaller. Now the inner radius is where you're gonna be hearing the, the audio at full volume. So it's not gonna change anywhere here, this will be full volume. It will still obviously be location based, but this is full volume. So for me, I'm gonna have that as 200. Actually, let's keep it at 400. And the fall off distance is where the audio is gonna be fading in and fading out. So the closer you are to the inner radius, the louder it's gonna be, the further away you are, the quieter it's going to be, and when you're outside of the fall of distance, you're not going to hear it at all. So I'm going to lower this all the way down just so we can actually hear it. So let's say 800. So we've got 400 for the inner radius and 800 for the fall of distance. And we're going to just save that like so. Minimize it and you'll see that again, we've got the fall of distance, inner radius, sorry, and the fall of distance here, like so. So again, location based, so whenever the player is standing here, they're gonna hear it coming from this direction. And since they're standing there, that will nearly be at full volume, but just not quite. We're gonna open this up and just check to see if there's anything else we want to change. So what we've got is we've got the music, we've got it looping, and we've also changed the attenuation to have the fall of distance and inner radius at the size we want, the shape we want, and also making sure it is location based. That's all I really wanna go over today. Again, there's obviously a lot more you can actually do to customize and change the audio files inside of the sound queue. But what I just went over today was simply just changing it to be location based and directional as that's quite a common thing people want to do, but I've never really gone over and fully explained it like this. I've sort of just done it in videos, obviously explaining it as I'm doing it, but this was a proper explanation and video of it. So again, let's save, close and hit play just to test this out again. So like I said, you can hear it coming from like Northwest from where I'm currently standing. And if I had to move my camera, as that's where I'm looking, you can hear the audio actually moving around as well. And let's test the inner radius and fall of distance. So I to stand here, this is at full volume. And if I were to walk away, you'll slowly hear it start fading out. And over here, you can't hear it at all. So again, this is what we've done. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we want to do. We set it up so we have a location based and directional audio in which we can place it in a certain place in the level or really however you want. So again, footsteps or gunshots. So another player can shoot and that will then spawn in the sound effect at that location as well. So other players know where it came from, which would be a great application for this. And we've also got it so it's full volume and fading in and out as well. So again, a great use case for this is gunshots. So other players can hear where you are and how close or how far away you are. And the same goes to you for other players as well. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and hope you found it helpful, and if you did, please sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.